Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Hardy Weinberg Equilibrium, and this is for you that are taking a um, evolution or ecology class. This will show up there, or evolutionary analysis. And pretty much what we use this equation is called the Hardy Weinberg Equilibrium Equation. What this is used for is used to detect um, the changes in the legal frequencies um, of populations in order to see whether or not evolution is occurring or not. And based on that, um, we are following the definition of evolution, which is the change of allele frequency over time. So I'm going to talk to you guys what the equation is, how it's used, and we're going to do a practice problem, maybe even two if there's time. So let me show you what the equation looks like. All right. So the Hardy-Weinberg equation is going to be P squared plus 2pq plus q squared. Now, don't let this equation freak you out. For those of you that are not really um, into math, this is very simple. Um, so, let me put this aside for a time. We're going to talk about cats. So, let's say there are 100 cats in a population. Now, within these 100 cats, we have... Um, we'll say 70 green eyes and we have 30 blue eyes. So based on this, and, and I'm going to give you guys this information, that the green eyes is dominant over the blue eyes. So green eyes has, let's say, a capital G allele and blue eyes, since it's recessive, we know for sure that it has two recessive alleles, therefore it's homozygous. And we know it's homozygous because in order to show blue eyes a recessive phenotype, you must have a recessive genotype um, accordingly. So based on information, let's go back to this. So P squared, what P squared is going to resemble is going to resemble the, um, the homozygous um, homozygous individuals within the population. So those who have green eyes but have capital G, capital G, will be represented by P squared. So their allele frequency is represented by P squared. 2PQ is going to represent the heterozygous allele frequency within the population. So those who have both capital G and little g, and remember, you can have green eyes and you can be either homozygous or heterozygous because the capital G is a dominant allele, which in this case is green eyes. And then we get to Q squared. Q squared is going to resemble the blue eyes in the population, the recessive uh, phenotype. So these guys are going to be little g, little g. So based on this information, we can calculate the allele of frequency within a population. So back to our example here, we have 100 cats in the population, and we said 70, 70, 70 cats of them have uh, green eyes, and 30 of them have blue eyes. And like I said before, because it, you know it's recessive, uh, we know these guys are for sure little g, little g. So when we're finding the allele of frequency, um, I recommend you always start off with q squared, because that's something that we know 100% for sure. So q squared in this case, will be 30 over 100. And this is just finding a proportion. So from here, we know 30 over 100 um, is going to give us uh, 0.3. And we know 70 over 100 is going to give us 0.7. Notice how 0.7 uh, plus 0.3 is going to give us 1. Um, this is a very important theme throughout this um, equation here. So now we know what our Q squared value is. So we're going to make a little chart here. We know uh, Q squared is going to equal 0.3 because Q squared is going to resemble the homozygous recessive genotype um, allele frequencies in the population, which we found to be 30 over 100. Um, therefore, it's going to be 0.3. So now that we have Q squared, we can easily find what the value for Q is by finding the square root of 0.3, which is going to equal um, about 0.55. And from here, 
we can easily find the value for p. Now p is defined as um, 1 minus q. So p 1 minus q, 1 minus 0.55 should result in 0.45. Now we have our p value. And from here, we can find p squared by simply just finding the, um, just squaring 0.45 essentially. And that will give us 0 0.20 roughly. And from here, we have our p squared, we have our q squared. Now what we're missing is our 2pq. Now to find where the heterozygous allele frequency is, we just do 2 times p, which is going to be 0.45, and then multiply that by 0.55. Let me just move this to the side here. And this is to find 2pq. And 2pq is going to give us roughly 0 0.50. Now let me clean this up a little bit. Now let's see what these numbers actually mean. So we know that our p squared is going to be 0 0.20. So we know the allele frequency of the homozygous um, combination within this population is going to be 0 0.20. And we know that the allele frequency of, um, of, this, of this genotype, capital G, little g, is going to give us approximately 50%. And Q squared, we found to be 0.3. So we know what the allele frequency is with, for this population of 100 cats. Now, where we use the Hardy-Weinberg principle is when we compare this population. Suppose we calculate these allele frequencies at time point, um, we're going to say time point X naught, so the starting point. And we come back about, let's say, 100 years. After 100 years, we find that these allele frequencies have changed. So, for example, for the heterozygous, um, we said it was 0 0.50 here at, um, at x naught. And after 100 years, we find that the um, heterozygous genotype uh, frequency has shifted to 0.75. This is completely hypothetical. We can see, we can say that there's a clear difference between 0.50 and 0.75. Therefore, in this particular population of 100 cats, the allele frequencies have changed. And by the um, definition of evolution, which is defined as um, allele frequency over a change of allele frequency over time, we can infer that there is some kind of evolutionary event occurring within this population. And this is um, essentially what the Hardy-Weinberg principle is used for in ecology and evolution. Thank <laughs> you.